It's safe to say that a Minnesota man's love for history has forced him to have a few irons in the fire. Arnie Stein is the proud owner of more than 3,000 irons, some dating back to the early 1700s. And this week's Finding Minnesota, John Lauritsen takes us to Arnie's Iron Museum in Morris, where wrinkles in history are smoothed out. I don't think that most folks realize the depth of an iron collection like this. Or you could say that most folks didn't even realize there were iron collectors. There is no excuse for you to ever have a wrinkly shirt, right? Probably not. <laughs> Instead of postage stamps or postcards, Arnie Stein likes a little metal and a little steam. We just found out there were more and more and more. In the early 90s, Arnie and his first wife, Corrine, began collecting antiques, and they noticed they had about a half dozen irons in their collection. That made Arnie think about how much history is contained in a single household item. If an iron could talk, yes, the stories it would tell. It would tell a lot of them. Maybe there was some that got thrown at a husband or something, and, you know, there was a hole in a wall somewhere, you know. I don't know. <laughs> there are now more than 3,000 stories in Arnie's museum near Morris. It began with a few live auctions. And then eBay came along, and eBay was the holy girl of iron collecting. And that's when the household artifacts started coming in from all over the world. This is Indonesia right here. This is from France and this was made by a blacksmith. From the oldest. Uh, it's got a date of uh, 1761 on it. To the oddest. Well, you don't iron with the suitcase, you iron with the handle. From the smallest. It's a miniature Mrs. Potts iron. To the largest. That honor goes to a 40-pound Egyptian foot iron. The uh, person doing the ironing would put his bare foot on here and hold on to this end, and he's swinging this around, and he could do a sheet just like that. A lot of Arnie's irons used to be in storage, but when Corrine passed away in 2009, Arnie built a museum in his backyard as a tribute to her. A few years later, he fell in love again and married Linda. You knew what you were getting into when you married Arnie. Oh, right? yes, I did. <laughs> For Linda, part of the fun is watching people walk into what the Iron Man has waiting. They're absolutely dumbstruck. I mean, it's just like, oh, I wasn't expecting this. I had no idea the extent of the irons and the collection that was available. And so it just was this whole different world to see. When he's not entertaining visitors, Arnie spends his time looking for irons that run on coal, kerosene, whale oil, or electricity. And he lets off steam by cataloging his artifacts. It's work, but it's also a passion. And now that he's retired, it's not like he's pressed for time. Who was sold to and how it was passed along to people down the line, whether they were immigrants or from this country, and what that iron had seen in a home, you know, it would be just amazing. Just one iron. There's history in just that one piece, you know. John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. Arnie is actually part of a group of iron collectors from around the country called the Pressing Iron and Trivet Collectors of America. If you'd like to visit Arnie's Museum, we do have more information for you on our website. Just go to WCCO.com and click on links. If those irons could talk. <laughs> yeah, I bet there are All some stories, the stories there. All the stories they could tell. Yeah. All right.